Hey, everybody, it's Chuck Arfine. This is the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you as always by our great friends at Wintrust. So when the White Sox acquired Yohan Moncada from the Red Sox in the Chris Sale trade in 2016 and later signed him to that five-year, $70 million contract extension, they and we were expecting Moncada to be a star for many years to come. But instead, there's been a huge gap between the expectations for Moncada and the Moncada reality. And with the White Sox holding a $25 million club option for 2025, He'll likely become a free agent after this season. So what can we expect from Mankata in 2024? Will he have another injury plague season like the last two, or will he stay healthy? Will he continue to frustrate, annoy, and let down a good portion of the fan base? Or will he finally be the Yoan Mankata we saw in 2019 that has all the tools to be one of the best players in the game? On the podcast, Ryan McGuffey joins me. As we look into the White Sox heavens, quite possibly for the final time, and pray for Mankata to be that guy, or the guy, or at least a guy who can have a big season for the White Sox at the plate. Or will he go down in history as one of the most disappointing players in White Sox history? Why, it's now or never for Yoan Mankata. That is next. All right, Ryan McGuffey. So uh, we have been quite critical of Yohan Mankata <laughs> on this podcast for the last couple of seasons. But let's put things in the proper perspective and give you some context, because before that, we were treating Yohan Mankata and talking about him like he was the second coming. I mean, the sale trade happened. He was the number one prospect in all of baseball. And we did we praised him and we're like th- thinking and believing that the best was yet to come. And then Starting about a couple of years ago, I started to be skeptical. I think you were about a year behind me. And now you've passed me completely in your belief of you all, Mankata. So where do you stand right now with Mankata? I expect nothing. You expect nothing. That's where we're yeah. at with you. Okay. Oh, I mean, I just don't understand how you can reasonably expect anything other than a replacement level player. I wow. mean, he's he can't stay on the field. When he's on the field, he has – flashes of production um you know i've always i've always actually supported his de- defense i have been i've told you that i thought he's a gold glove caliber third baseman the problem with that is he's never on the field but i do think his best strength at this point in his career like at least in his white Sox career is his glove and until he proves otherwise and and, and quite frankly chuck other than like 2019 is now so far removed it's such an outlier of the rest of the back of his baseball card that I don't even like talking about it anymore because there's just, he's just seems to be like this 260, 10 to 12 Homer, 40 to 55 RBI, 770 OPS disappointment. Like you, in your intro, you, you kind of nailed it. I, I feel like I was answering yes to all of those questions. Like, is it now or never? Is he the biggest bust? Can he do this? And I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm saying yes. To, like my answer is we, and we're going to talk this out. Yeah, it's like yes to all of these questions. We'll get to this later in the podcast. Is he on the Mount Rushmore for most frustrating White Sox players in team history? That's a yes for you. Yeah, and is he I number mean, one? Well, we'll 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 dive into it a little later. But yeah, for me, he's on there. He's on. The he's market. got I, to me. He's like he's he's like Abe Lincoln or George Washington. I mean, he's he's got to be on the Mount Rushmore because of what he represented and who he was traded for, right? Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. he he's the only one that actually reached number one in prospect status. I mean, there, we had guys and we had three, I think four, five, but Moncada was number one. I mean, he got a standing ovation for a walk in his first at bat. I mean, we remember that. I remember the the electricity of of being in the clubhouse on the, the, when he was called up from Charlotte. I mean, I, I went to Charlotte and saw him, and they had the they had the jerseys of Mancada, and they said it was only the second one ever made from a Charlotte night. I mean, this guy he had that buzz all the way down in the minor leagues. So, I, I think. No matter what happens, Chuck, I think he has to be on that Mount Rushmore because of all of the things that he actually, in theory, couldn't control. He had that buzz. 
he didn't live up to the hype. So I look back at some of the podcasts that we've done on Moncada. <laughs> These are not all of them, but April of 2017, it was called, How Soon Could the White Sox Bring Up Yoan Moncada? August of 2018, How Does Yoan Kata Get Out of His Slump? Moncada Get Out of His Slump. September, 20, uh, September of 2018, What Kind of Player Will Yoan Moncada Become? April of 2019, Alex Gordon says Yoan Moncada is a superstar in the making. Like, that was the peak. 2019, and this was April of 2019. Then March 5th, 2020, right before the pandemic, I'm at spring training and he signs that extension. So he had one really, really good year in 2019. And we did an emergency podcast. It was me and Scott Merkin. I went back and listened to this guff. This is the title of the podcast unofficially. I said this on the podcast as I opened it. I said, and I was screaming, I'm not going to scream this time. I said, your Moncada gets a freaking contract extension. Rick Hahn does it again. The White Sox are going to be great for years and years and years. White Sox talk podcast. <laughs> How things have changed since then. Uh, because we, all, we thought this was only the beginning for Moncada. We thought he was going to get better and better. And the Sox signed Moncada, Robert, and Jimenez, two extensions right around the same time. And after the Moncada extension, this is what Rick Hahn said. He goes, quote, we can objectively sit here today and feel like we have three of arguably the most exciting young players in the American League under control for at least the next six years. Rick might sound, I don't want to say like an idiot, he might sound like he didn't know what he was talking about, but let's be honest, everybody, including us, nodded our heads when he was saying that, agreeing with him. So that's why if you hear us criticize Moncada like we do, it's because of what we, where we were, where we thought he would be by now, and he, we've just been so disappointed in him. And this is his last. This is his last shot. Now or never for Mankata. I think it's fair to. I probably am harder on Eloy, um, but I think to me they're both worthy of the criticism because of the contract. And I think Rick was right at the time. Yeah, at the time where those guys were at the start of their careers. The, everybody in base, the, forget fans, forget the fans, take all of the media, take all of us out of the equation. Look around New York to San Diego and what people were saying about the White Sox after those extensions. Everybody in Chicago is talking about, man, they did what the Cubs couldn't do. They locked those guys up. They locked up their position players and, you know, hat tip to the White Sox. At the end of the day, and this is what I think this is what makes Moncada so infuriating. You know, and 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 Daryl Van Schoen brought it up last week a little bit, but like body language and Mankata have always been a thing. What, how we want a guy to act and look and and feel, it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean that guy's capable of doing that. I don't really have a problem with the way Mankata carries himself. What I have a problem with, and what I have a problem with, kind of with Aloy as well. How in the hell does this keep happening to guys who are this young? Mankata's got a bad back. Joe Creedy had an, a 60-year-old back when he was 25. But that guy played through – I mean, he, he had balls of steel because he was doing everything he could to stay on the field. I feel like – He didn't have the guaranteed money. He didn't like have the guaranteed Mankata. money. And that's, uh, that's what I was getting to. They – and this is where the criticism of, of the White Sox front office maybe is fair now that we can be in – now that we can go back in hindsight. You know, did they lock up the right type of player? I, that's part of the scouting and development part. Like, you need to know from a makeup standpoint, these guys are not going to be unmotivated because they are paid. And how they prepared themselves, how they trained in the offseason, it clearly has mattered because it has not translated to Major League Baseball. Yeah. And I know – the, uh, we had the pandemic season, and then we had the strike short in season where they couldn't contact the players in the offseason. To me, Kachuk, at this point, those are just BS excuses because why are all the other superstars in the game doing just fine? It comes down and to each individual player and how you, you got to want it. You got to want it. And you have to be motivated by something other than money. This is Mike Cotta's last year in a White Sox uniform, period. That's a fact. Like I, I, will, I don't care if he hits 325 with 25 homers and 80 RBIs. He will not be in a White Sox uniform next year. 
I, I don't think there's any scenario. I went as far as to say I don't. I would have done everything possible to let him loose, eat the money, and cut him gone because I would have gotten rid of all the fat. I would have gotten rid of anybody that represented failure. And I know it's not that easy. I know it's. I know it's not as easy just going. Well, we'll eat this money, eat this money, trade this guy, trade that guy in a market that has hundreds of players still available in free agency that has completely wiped out trade scenarios across the board. It's why Dylan Cease is still in the White Sox is because free agency is complete catastrophic mess in Major League Baseball. But that doesn't mean you can't cut guys loose. I understand he's owed $41 million. I get it. I, I understand like when you look at the whole complexity of the deal and how it works, I get it. We'll you know, see. Thirty-one million about now. About thirty-one million. 30. Yeah, yeah. Third, my, it's twenty-four third. and a half for something like that for this year, and then a five million dollar buyout for next it's, year. Yes, it's, it's tw- yeah. I was going back to last year, and he was making seventeen and twenty-four. It all. It's all a lot too of money. Much. It's lots all too much. And lots of money. It's all too much for that guy who's giving you, you know, an up. I mean, I'll pull up his numbers. Like, I, what's his average games play? If you take twenty twenty out of the equation. Is yeah, John well, I mean, 125 games a year? Him, the biggest problem with him, games played wise, it's the last two seasons. It felt like he was injury plagued before that, just because how many times he would, you know, seem to like be in pain while he was playing, take himself out of games. But then you look back at the end of the season, you're like, well, he still played 130 games, so that's not so bad. But then there was the COVID season where he, he did try to fight through playing with COVID. So I gave him a lot of rope, but it's these last two seasons where yeah. he's like 27 and 28. It's like, let's go. Here you are. Moncada, be that guy. And he's had his two worst seasons. His war in 2019 was 5.5 2021, which was a, I'm, I'm going to throw 2020 out the window. 2021. It was a good season. He was a four, four war player. Give me that. But 2022, 0.9, 2023, 1.2. Come on. He's better than that. Yeah, I mean, is he? I, and well, I mean, even he, even 2021 when he did play 144 games, he was 263. His on base was nice, 375, 412. I, he, he was at 116 OPS plus player. Like, I guess he is. Is that what he is? You like, is that it? Yeah. Are I people mean, happy with that? that? Like every day of the week this year, if he's that player, and that's not even that great, but it will take. That sucks. That sucks. By the way, like. Just to let people know, okay? Just to let people know, like the, he has a higher career war. Now he's been, to his credit, he he did come up in the major leagues, you know, before everybody else. He was here in 2017, so he does. This is kind of a misleading stat, but he does have a higher war. I mean, Eloy, his career war is 5.6. That's insane. His career war is 5.6. Mancada's is 14, and Roberts is 12.5. And now keep in mind, five of that was last year. So Mankata, not that we're sitting here, you know, saying, "Oh, like uh, he," because of defense, he's a he's a better player than his slash line is going to show you because of that. But at the end of the day, he's not the guy that was sold to us in the Chris, Chris Sale. Sale. Like they gave up Chris Sale for Yoel Mankata, and he was yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris Sale might player in return. I mean, speaking about Rushmore's, Chris Sale probably belongs on the Mount Rushmore of White Sox pitchers of all time. Like, oh, yeah. and that, I mean, yeah. so, you know, we have a Mount Rushmore of like studs and a Mount Rusher of Rushmore of failure. And the guy who the stud traded for the guy on the failure is that's, that's not what you want. That's not no. what you want. So, why are we talking about Mankata? Well, obviously, the past and what we're looking for in the future this season. But on top of it, he did speak with reporters last week and said a lot of stuff that we want to react to and then, you know, drive home the fact of, okay, this really is now or never, and then give you some idea of what he was going through last year. So go back a year, he played in the world baseball classic and we were watching him and he was so fired up playing for Cuba. And we're like, well, why aren't you like that with the white Sox?" So that gave me a, a, an additional like, hmm. And then he starts the season for like a week looking like that same guy on the field in the World Baseball Classic. And then he hurts his back. He hurt his back twice. He missed April 11th till May 
12th with lower back soreness. And again, June 14th to July 25th with lower back inflammation. So he said this with reporters last week that the, uh, from, uh, told this to White Sox reporters, quote, during the first half of that season, it was painful, stressful. I couldn't do anything. I wanted to do stuff and help the team, but I couldn't. It was a really tough time for me. A bad back, like that's going to crush you uh, at third base and at the plate. I understand it. But then he said this, and this is what gets me about him. He goes, my, quote, my off season, this off season, has been devoted to getting my core strong. My focus has been on my abs, hamstrings, and quads, getting my whole body strong. And end quote. And I hear that and I'm like, aren't you supposed to be doing that every year? Like, mm -hmm. wait, yeah, get your abs right. Especially you're a third baseman. Your back is like very, very important to you. Work on your core. What that's are you doing in the off that, season? And right now so you're doing like, it? That's athlete 101. Like yeah. that that applies to like us, Chuck. You know, like you know what's gonna be good going forward as we get older? You're strengthening your core, core. because it's going to carry it throughout your body. Why I shouldn't be like, sitting here preaching to us about oh, here's what we need to do. I don't understand. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Mankata. You know why your Mankata gets hurt? I don't think he takes care of his body like he should. This is why you can blame the White Sox strength and conditioning coaches, but I'll tell you this, don't. There's only so much that they can do and say. We've had Scott Pitsednik on this podcast and on post-game shows. We talk about it with him. Here was, here's an athlete, right? And he was he had his own problems staying on the field, but he eventually got to the point where he realized, yeah, it's on me. It's on me. Like, it's on Mankata to stay healthy. I'm glad he's doing something about it, but where's that been the last two years? Well, there's all this stuff talked about the White Sox strength and conditioning. And I know AT, uh, Alan Thomas had been there for, you know, 20 years and <clears throat> they moved on from him and Herm Schneider retired and is a consultant. So don't, 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 don't sit there and go, well, like, well, they should have never got rid of those guys. Like, first of all, you're allowed to retire. Secondly, remember all the times we would sit there and uh, the White Sox would brag and they, for right, re for the right reasons that they had the fewest amount of games missed or guys spent on the IL or DL in baseball. With Herm Schneider on board, right? With Herm Schneider. And, 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 and it was by hundreds of games. And yeah. do you know why? It wasn't just about the staff. It wasn't just about those guys like knowing more than somebody else. They had committed players. They had guys who were committed to themselves and committed to the team that they were going to come hell or high water, be ready to go come the season to play 162 games. It's not okay to be – the amongst the highest paid players in the, in the organization's history and come in here playing 100 games a year. It's not okay. It's not. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable to be hurt every year. It's unacceptable to be hurt every year with the same injuries. I know some guys are snake bitten. I don't think these guys are snake bitten anymore. I don't. I mean, it's every excuse in the book. If I'm healthy, this, I'm motivated. Shut up. I don't want to hear any of the quotes. I give my kind of credit for uh, this. sounds insane that I'm giving him credit for showing up in Chicago last weekend to like the faux Sox fest um, with the, with, with, with the team and, and uh, with their community involvement and season ticket holders. And I, I do give him a little bit of credit for that. I know that Luis Robert, he was a late scratch. Where are some of those other guys? Where's the accountability? Those guys should all be there. Hey, why didn't Robert show up? Uh, he was supposed to. I, I don't know what the details were, but where's Eloy? Where these guys should that's the crap I'm talking about. Like, so for Moncada, that's a hat tip to me. That's me going, okay, like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna note that in January. Like you look around and it's you don't look at, to your right and see Lucas Giolito and Dylan Cease anymore and uh Tim Anderson and you know we Jeff Monte Ground up. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I'm saying uh, that particular day he looks over and he sees Nicky Lopez and Nick Nestrini, and he looks to his yeah. left and he sees – the things have changed. This is not the, the the excitement that you once walked into, but at least he showed up. Those guys should be bending over backwards, Chuck. In my opinion, they should be bending over backwards. You're motivated. Show me how motivated are you? Because your career is in jeopardy, dude. Like it's not even about the White Sox anymore. These guys, nobody wants you. 
Nobody wants a Lloyd Hamilton. Well, at that price, for sure. You've seen the, the the reports from from Ken Rosenthal and Jeff Passan saying there's zero trade market for Aloy Jimenez. That's insane. There, and the, the prices are too high for everybody. The White Sox would have probably taken a used bag of balls and a flyer on somebody to get rid of some of these guys, but no one wants them. And if that Chuck doesn't fire you up, if that is your, it fires me up. I'm not stepping on the field. If that doesn't fire those guys up, it doesn't even like to hell with them because if you're just worried about collecting your paycheck and not representing the damn logo on your chest and looking in the mirror and having any kind of pride and passion for the player that you see or the person that you see, then you know what? We know everything we need to know about you. And right now, I think we know about you. So I'm looking into the camera right now saying, prove to me you're motivated. Prove to me that you've been working on your core. So on April 15th, when the White Sox announced there's an IL stint and it involves one of these guys, we're going to be sitting here doing a podcast going, I told you so. So prove us otherwise. Because right now, you haven't earned the right to even say that shit, in my opinion. That's where you are. All right. So in his final 41 games, remember this? Oh, there was Moncada, the one we were hoping oh, for. Eight homers, yeah. 12 doubles, doubles, 24 RBIs, a 9-11 OPS when the White Sox were 40 games under 500, whatever it was. Yeah. So he did say this with reporters. He said a lot. One is, I think God has saved something good for me. Oh. Okay. Want to bring religion to it? Into it? Fine. So he is believing something special is coming. Now, Grafal said, this is this was a little surprising, that Moncada is arriving at spring training this week, two weeks before pitchers and catchers even report, like three weeks before, or a little more than three weeks before, position players are due to report. So, Guff, there's your first sign of motivation from Moncada. So I like at least that he's doing that. And hopefully that materializes into a better season. Look, I, I know I'm going hard here. I, I do like what I hear. Okay. Yeah. I'm contradicting what I just said a little bit. I like the steps that are being put into place. Mm-hmm. I do think, like, that's why I note I jot down Yohan Mankata was here in January. Andrew Benatendi. Andrew Benatendi has $75 million. Where was he? He was standing next to you on Mankata. So for all the shit that he gets about his money, it's not his fault that he's the highest paid White Sox player in history. He was here. So I, there's some account of, like, there are guys that have a little, that, I'm noting that stuff. It's it's the littlest, maybe like the most meaningless thing. Those things do matter. Okay. The organization can look at that and go, that guy gave up like a free weekend. To, okay. Like he's going to go to spring training three weeks early. That. That is significant. Mm -hmm. That is significant. Again, like, I I don't want to hear Pedro talk about what kind of team they are. I don't. Like, no one – the only thing that you've earned is the right to step between the lines on opening day. Prove to us that things are different because I'm going to show you seven years on the – I'm going to hold up a – I'm going to to hold up a post-it note. It's just going to fall down like an accordion. And it's going to show you a career that tells me I'm right until you show me otherwise. Pedro Grafal said about Moncada showing up so early to spring training, quote, it's a great sign and he's going to put himself in a position to have a great year. We need Moncada. Oh, this is now me talking. They need Moncada. I, I wish I pulled Pedro Grafal's quotes from a year ago right now on Yo and Moncada because they so, sound very similar. Yeah, so Moncada then said, the way I'm preparing myself for this upcoming season is to play, I don't know why I came up with this number, 202 games. So there's, uh, I don't know, 20 spring training games, uh, 162 regular season games, and a big a big postseason. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? That was actually the, my, I was, I was going to, I was saving that one. That's the, that's the one thing I noted. I'm like, at least this guy's talking about playing more than 100. Like, he's, he's, his he goal. sounds like Luis Robert at the start of last season. That's what he was saying. Yeah. And Luis Robert did. So, look, the best thing for everyone, 
right? Is that Yoel Moncada goes back to 2019 in some miraculous, hopefully God did save something for him. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he did. And he is the 2019 Yoel Moncada. He still won't be back in 2025, in my opinion. Yeah. But everyone wins. The White Sox get a really good 140 plus, 140 OPS plus player. Yoel Moncada's career continues and his market People are people are now going okay, like I I'm invested in this guy, and it's a win win scenario. That's the best case scenario I think out of this. But yeah, I mean, as we look at this lineup, and as we look at this offense and the players who are there, I'm sure many fans, and I'll include myself, are looking at the offense and saying, "This is going to be a crappy offense because I I just it's very easy to be like, well, we're not going to get anything from Aloy Jimenez, we're not going to anything from when I say anything, we're not going to get max value from Jimenez or Mankata because we haven't gotten it. But what gives me hope, might be false hope, but the optimist that I am, what if Mankata and Jimenez show up and have the seasons they should have? All of a sudden, this team, this offense, this season is going to look a whole lot better. But for you to rely on that, how can you? Because they haven't given us any reason to believe that. So... It's kind of like this thing that's there, and I'm I'm like you. Show me, show me what you are made of. And I found I found Pedro, his interview with you last year in spring training on the White Sox Talk podcast. Oh. Here's what he, here's what he said about Yoan Mankata. He's got to understand there's a pace that he has to play this game with. It's been a great two and a half weeks. I think he's hungry. <laughs> I think he understands what he did in 2019 was special. I think he knows that he can certainly do it again. How are we going to do it? What needs to happen for him to be that type of player? We're in the process of having those conversations, and I'm really, really happy with the work he's putting in early, during, and after practice, which shows me that he's here to do something special. (laughs) Shut up. Stop talking. That is from February of 2023, folks. It sounds eerily similar to what he said last weekend. Like... That's where I'm at. Like, no one has earned the right anymore to say these type of things. You know, like we we talked about parades, plural, and championships. Championships. No, 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 no. You were 40 games under 500 last year. It was the worst season in 52 se- 52 years. Pedro kept his job. It's very clear what type of team the White Sox are putting on the field in 2024. The holdovers are here because there's no other place for them. No one cares if you're motivated. By the way, I want to follow up at spring training with Chris Getz when he brought up with reporters like a month or so ago that Moncada might play some second base, first base, or outfield <laughs> yeah. on top of it. Like, what was that all about? Uh, I, don't I surely really don't think he should one. be playing outfield. Otherwise, he'll be on the shelf early. I mean, it was almost like, yeah, yo, yo, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have other plans. You're not in them. So you, we might just throw you out in the outfield and see what happens there. Don't you don't agree this is likely one. his last season with the White Sox? Say it again? Don't you agree that this is likely his last season with the White yeah. Sox? Yeah. If he has it, honestly, if he has a great first half, you trade him at the deadline. Man, that's twelve million dollars someone's taking on. Or then take then you're 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 paying six of that twelve. I don't know. Get yeah, something. I'm with, I, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, maybe there'll be a mark. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna have to have a ridiculous first half in order right. to have so a market. Okay, so if that doesn't happen, that means he's not having a great season and he's not coming back in 2025. Here, I mean, here's here's what I want the White Sox scenario where he comes back and I can't I can't see it. Here's what I would like the White Sox to do, though. If if if, it, if we're going through the motions here and the season's kind of a, a I don't want to say lost season, but if if, it, if they're up the track and it's All Star break, don't be afraid to try something else out. Don't just put them out there every day because you have well, to yeah, give you have them Ryan a check. Ramos, who's a third baseman. I mean, he's but that's my point. The door. Well, then let him come in because if it, if this is the same guy we're going to see here, if he's banged up all the time. Then other people have like you need to start looking at what's next. I hope, I hope that I'm sitting here six months from now and we're talking about the 151 games played from Yoan Mankata. I hope that I, I hope we are. I hope. But I'm a realistic person. 
I think I could probably get 10 to one odds on that from Vegas that he plays 150 games, maybe even higher because he's never done it. Right. So yeah. why, why would, why is it different? Because he's training, his core is important. He's motivated. He better, if you're not motivated now, dude, it, it, that's why it is Chuck to answer your this, question. Yes, it is now is or what never. Me about him. It is now or never for Yo Amankai. This team needed him last year and the year before, and the year before. They needed him, and they really need him now. But where was he? I'm not saying he didn't care, but his actions on his own weren't enough to really show, to warrant and equate to what I'm trying to say, a player who realizes and recognizes that the team needs him. Yeah. And, I mean, did he not focus on his core last offseason? I don't know, but... The fact that he had to bring that up and go, well, I'm really focusing on this this year. Like, this is going to fix the back problem. Well, you know. And, and this is on the last regime, managers, et cetera. I'm not just going to put this all on Pedro and going forward. But Yo Mikado, let's say he was trying to fight through pain and get say, I'm 70%, but damn it, I need to be on the field because Cleveland's in town. But then he looks at a couple stalls this way, a couple stalls that way, and he's like, well, that guy's not as hurt as me. He's not running at all. But what the hell am I doing? Why am I sacrificing myself when I'm looking down the stalls here and I can find four or five guys that are better shaped than me that are given less than me? So I'm not saying – I'm just I'm, – I'm, that's a speculation, maybe a little bit more informed speculation. But I could see that. I could see a guy going, I'm bending over backwards to get back. And – I don't feel like I'm getting this, the return from my teammates. Yeah. It is to me now or never. Right. And when I say now, yeah, he was good in 2019. He was good enough in 2021, but we're looking at the last, your last year, you, you can, uh, you know, change the narrative about you with the white Sox. I don't think he's listening to the podcast, so I don't really need to be like saying you, you Mankata, cause I doubt he's listening. But the point is, is that, you know, there is a narrative that you have written, that he has written, and this is where we're at. And unless he looks like the player we thought he'd become, he will go down in history as easily, easily, in my opinion, one of the biggest busts in the history of the franchise. I'm putting him up there with Adam Dunn. And you could say John Danks after he signed that contract extension. Thanks did good stuff before that, but after that, that ended up being a disaster of a contract. I mean, who else we got in here? Like Alex Rios I, or uh, I think Eloy's on that list. I think Eloy, Grandal, yeah, wow. Grandal is a, Grandal I, I, is a hundred percent on the list. He's the biggest free agent failure in the White Sox history. Period. Because of he was the highest more than done. Yes, because he had he had, he was the represent. What he represented at the time when he's, he signed the largest contract in White Sox history, and it was a sign that, okay, the White Sox are turning now. They're here they come. And everything about that contract is wrong. Adam Dunn, he won comeback player of the year. He, like, he had 40 homers. I think he hit like 199 or whatever, but right. or 210. Um, I, I think I, I, I would make an argument. I don't know if you could put three guys from the same era – in, in the uh, on the Mount Rushmore, but if we're doing like a top ten list, Mancada, uh, Mancada, Grandal, and I think Eloy is on there, man. If Eloy plays, if he's if he's out for a lengthy period of time this year, yeah, if he plays right like a hundred, then he's he has to be, yeah. Because again, the con this the contract matters. What the what what he represented when he signed those when these guys signed that does that does yeah. carry weight. It That's does. True. It's true. Because the White Sox could have given $80 million to somebody else. Right. All right. Well, this is where we're at with Yoan Mankata. All eyes will be on him, uh, certainly in spring training, but 100% once the season starts. I, I, I'm going gonna, gonna to say this like a million times, but him and Eloy are like massive X factors for this team in 2024 if they're going to do anything. If they're more, if they can be more of the same with them getting hurt and basically being around league average, around there, that's 
not good enough and we're going to have another bad season for the White Sox. But if they reach their potential, I mean, like, when are we going to have a guy other than Jake Berger come in and have like a kick-ass season where they exceed expectations? This used to happen all the time with the White Sox. Like, they, they acquire Carlos Quinton and the guy goes off. Yeah. Like, give me some of those seasons where Sox aren't getting any of that. From They're any getting the same boring, boring ass season. Like Luis from Robert everybody. Jr. finally did it last year. Fine. Yeah. But we were also expecting that. But like, give me, like, surprise us. Where, where are the surprises? Yeah. I mean, don't have any so there, surprises. there's literally zero reason Eloy shouldn't be a 40 home run hitter in this league. It, it, there's just, <laughs> there's just not. And I don't understand why Moncada is not a 40 double. You know, seventy-five RBI guy. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get hung up on batting average, but Moncada should be a three seventy-five on base, and walk eighty times and have forty doubles there and play great defense. There's there's really no reason he shouldn't be doing that. Andrew Vaughn, Chuck, another one. Like it's time for him to be twenty-five, thirty homer guy. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It, like it's the patience. There is no more patience. Look at. No one's got patience anymore. The wicks on everyone are burned all the way down to the wax. And it's a brand so, new front office. Even though Getz was here, he's calling the shots. He was not calling the shots before. Right. And with Mankata, remember when he used to like have this great plate discipline? In 2021, yeah. he had a walk rate of 13.6%. Uh, 2022 was 7.4. Last season, 5.6. So who, what kind of hitter are you, Mankata? Take some walks. I, I thought he had a great eye. Yeah, that's all. I mean, dude, his career on base percentage is three thirty one. That's not a great eye. It's just we not three seventy five in there from twenty twenty one. Yeah, three seventy five or three sixty seven from nineteen, and then pretty much three thirty one. I mean, twenty twenty two, he had a two seventy three on base. Wow, two seventy three in twenty twenty two. Yes, <laughs> his OPS was six twenty six. That's why I'm just like. You know? here, here, here's our final message to Mankata. Please be now. Now. Now is the time. And, okay, we'll end with this. Chances he's now in 2024. Chances he's never. Oh, like nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten that he's never. One out of ten that he's now. Wow. I mean, how much higher would you go? Two out of ten? I go three. Three, okay. I'll give him because Fine. it's the last year of his contract. Maybe that is the the motivation he needs. And if that's a tr the, if that's true, then that says even more about him. Um, true. I'll, I'll give him a 30% chance of having that now season. But I'm also giving him a 70% chance of never. Like, that's still high. 70%? Yeah. I gave him 90. I know. I'm well aware. <laughs> I mean, but again, you are who you are at some point. Oh, I know. I so know. I'm not being a dick about this. Like, I'm just, this is so like. We're in, we're in year eight with Mankata. You are not you. being that. I mean, no. year eight. Yeah, and like, we are coming off a 101 loss season. Uh, we, That's it. yeah, I mean, the, the writing is all on the wall. We are not part, part, pardon us for being critical of a player that had uh, extreme expectations of being a, an MVP. And we were told that MVP vote, uh, an MVP, MVP finalist. That well, come on, Ugh. he's a large part of the reason why this championship window never went anywhere. Yep. It's not just him. Uh, no, there are no, many no. people to blame. No. But you're going to have a Mount Rushmore of reasons, of faces on the Mount Rushmore of, as to why we are here. He's prominently featured. Oh, yeah. and, I'm, and me, I, Chuck Garfine, am giving him one last shot in your one final season with the White Sox to finally prove us all wrong and be that guy. Be I know. Something like that guy. I would love it for Yoan Mankata to like get wind of this. I really would. And for him to call us over and be like, I'm gonna prove you mother effers wrong. I am. And then and I want him to come and I want and I want him to come to us in September and be like, What did I tell you? And I wanna get I wanna give him a fist bump and be like, damn it, that was fun. Like yeah. I the gimme the the crows, I I will eat that right in front of him.
But I have a feeling. You have a, you have a 90% feeling that's not going to happen. <laughs> feel, feel pretty strong about where I, I think this is going to go. All right. Well, that is a wrap for this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox checking with free ATMs nationwide. Go to the special White Sox webpage, www.wintrust.com slash Sox. Hawk Harrelson, take it away. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast is over. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.